Whether you're a professional or just a hobbyist looking for the first paint gun, there's a lot of reasons why this gun might be perfect for you. Howdy, howdy, Chris here. Today, I'm going to share with you how to repaint this rear bumper cover. We're going to seal it, paint it, and clear it all with a very unique DIY gun. So let's dig in and get started. This is the paint gun we'll be using today. Now this paint gun has been rebranded under a bunch of different names, but you can find it under the name R500. I will have links in the descriptions, but you can find it on Amazon. And I believe you can even purchase this on Walmart's website. Summit Racing sells it and Eastwood, even though those are a little bit pricier. So this is a budget paint gun and the price right now is around $60. Um, I think Walmart even had it for 45 at one point. That is a very attractive price for a paint gun as unique as this. And the reason why this paint gun is so unique is that it uses and consumes very little air. So if you're using a small compressor at your house, this is the perfect paint gun for you. It consumes about 3.5 to 3.9 CFMs, which stands for cubic feet per minute. This allows you to do a full paint job without any fluctuation in your air pressure, giving you a better quality finish. This is something you're just not going to get with any other gun, whether it be a budget gun or an expensive high dollar gun. I don't know of any. This is the only one I found. If you know of a gun that uses very little air pressure to perform and operate properly, then let me know down in the comments below. Let's go ahead and get this bumper ready for some sealer, and then we'll talk about some other benefits of this gun, how to set it up, and I'll let you decide on how you think this gun performs. The first thing I want to do is to clean this bumper before we start spraying our sealer. So I'm using 70% isopropyl alcohol. I feel like this cuts down on static electricity, which is going to attract dust to your paint job. I'm wiping it down with a microfiber towel. I like to wipe the alcohol in one pass to help eliminate static. Now, usually I like to wipe down the area that we're blending first when we're cleaning. And there's a reason for that. If we get any, any uh, primer dust or anything on our rag, we don't want to deposit it on the areas that we're blending, especially if you're painting like a white vehicle. I think this is going to be clean and we're going to just go ahead and tack rag it off after this and we'll be ready to mix up our sealer. Now I've wet down the floor. This is going to help keep any dust down. I'm going to open up that door and vent the fumes out that way. Okay, so I went ahead and cleaned the gun just to make sure all my air passages are clean. Very important to make sure your gun is clean and spraying properly. Do not drop these caps. You will, you will ruin it really quick. The reason I know that is because I've done it. Dropped a Vilvis cap before. On my Devilvis Plus gun, that was it was a hundred dollar cap to replace. So nice and clean. Air passages are clean. R500 is the same gun as this Eastwood LT100. Uh, the caps are just a little bit different, but the air passages are the same. Needle sets the same. They spray the same. This is a, about a hundred bucks, and this is quite quite a bit less, sixty. I started using these inexpensive disposable cups. A few different companies manufacture these. This is Savito, but I also have, I think they were out of, out of it on Amazon. So I did order the same one from Spray IQ, I believe, but this is the cup system here. But I like these cups because they're like, they're half the price of 3M. This is the 1.0 series. So it's the first series and I have really been enjoying them. They really worked well, easy to use. I haven't had any issues with them, but this is how the measuring system set up. You've got your mixing ratio at the bottom here. So what you do is if you're mixing paint, which would be two to one, typically, um, you put in the amount of paint you want. So if you go up to the three here, you just coordinate it with the one and go up to the three here with, so you'll mix the paint to three and then you'll add the reducer to three. So that gives you the one part reducer, very easy to use. Don't let all this stuff confuse you, but we're gonna mix sealer, that's four to one to two. So we're gonna put four parts of our uh, sealer in, one part of our activator, and we have to put two parts of reducer in it to make it sealer. This primer that we're using, primer sealer, it is U-Pole, U-Pole 2253. It's a four to one high build primer. 
it's direct to metal and it can also be used as a sealer and that's what is great about this the four to one we're going to put in our one part of primer we're going to use the standard one part right there and then we're going to put in two parts of our reducer this i picked up our local paint supplier coops wholesale so if you're in the tulsa area check out coops wholesale go to one and then another one we're not going to seal this entire bumper we're just sealing the primer area and a couple little areas that we need to seal before we apply our paint this also has these cup system have a strainer on a micron filter grab our r500 you just twist it on there and now we are ready to go make sure everything's on there tack cloth and this is basically going to just tack any dust that's landed on here i'm trying to keep the dust down in here and actually this will will create static electricity so i'm just going to try and keep the tacking to a minimum I'm going to keep this air pressure really low so we don't get a lot of overspray. About 22. And I'm going to go two turns out. When you spray your sealer, you want to overlap your passes 70%. You want to be about six inches away, depending on your air pressure and how smooth you need it to be. So I'm not pulling the trigger all the way and see how smooth that is. One thing you want to be aware of in colder temperature, this sealer can have a tendency to kind of fish eye because this panel is so cold. You want to be careful with how much you put on right away. Because we're doing a spot repair, we're not going to seal this entire bumper. We're just sealing the primered area and a few areas that we broke through the paint. Because we're not painting this entire cover, we're gonna just blend the color and then clear the entire bumper cover so we don't want sealer out towards the ends because then we would have to cover them in paint and that might create a mismatch from the bumper to the quarter panel. Okay, so let's let this flash off for just a few minutes and then I'm gonna put, I am gonna put one more coat on because there's a few darker areas here that I wanna get covered before we start applying our paint. I went ahead and added another coat of sealer, and now I'm just going to use U-Pole number nine, which is a blending additive. It's just basically a reducer, and it's just going to soften those edges of that sealer. I've mixed up a little cut-in color. This is just a straight red. We're cutting in this primer with this red, and this is a good opportunity to mention this. If you have some color laying around, always save your color. Um, you can always use it to cut in parts. I want to get this primer, get a good base on it, get it covered, and then we can go ahead and put the correct color on it. So we'll get this primer covered. I've already put one coat on. We'll go ahead and put a second coat on. You can see how nice and smooth this is. The gun settings for the base is I've got the fan pattern wide open. I've got the volume, which is the fluid, turned to three turns out from closed. Now, as far as the air pressure goes, I turned it up to about 25 PSI. Now, remember, this being a low CFM gun, you're going to need more pressure at your gun. So normally spraying base, I might spray 15 to 20. And so this has to be a little bit higher. Same with the clear coat. Normally I spray about 28 PSI on my clear coat, but with this gun, I bump it up to 30. It's still producing less overspray and less air pressure out of the gun. Um, because it uses less CFMs. Refresher on mixing, I know I just mentioned this, but two to one, this is the ratio. That's what this mixes up. This is a Nason XL. This was pre-mixed by O'Reilly's. I do find that they, that this brand has a, a pretty good color match. Now I'm ready to add the first coat of the correct color. So we'll mix up our two parts paint and then we're gonna add one part of our medium reducer is what I'm using today. We'll stir up, up a little bit and then we're able to spray our first coat. Now one great thing about this gun and added benefit is it produces a lot less overspray than a conventional gun. Although my Iwata and my Segola are really good guns, they produce a cloud of overspray when you're painting. More so when you're clearing but it's always nice to have a, 
uh, less overspray. It makes it much easier to vent out your garage if you're spraying at home. And it also saves you on paint and materials, which is gonna save you money in the long run. Okay. Let this flash off for 10 to 15 minutes, and then we'll apply our second coat. We're gonna apply our second coat of base. We'll go out into the bumper just a little bit more. You can see it's still a little bit transparent here, right there. I see a few particles of dust we might wanna knock off. There's one right there. Anytime you can clean up a little dust before you put your clear coat on, most of your dust comes in your base coat. Just so you know, I've been using this gun for about six months and I've sprayed everything with it and it, I really have no issues with it. It's a little bit slower than a conventional gun like an Iwata or a DeVilvis or one of your high dollar guns, but the transfer efficiency of paint to the panel is excellent. You're not going to get a ton of overspray with this and it really is going to save you on paint and clear coat. I'll go ahead and finish up the base. And then we'll talk about laying down clear coat, how to set up this gun, and what you need to know when you're using this gun for clear coat. If you're finding this video helpful, you can help out the channel by liking, subscribing, and commenting down below. And if you've used this gun or paint with this gun, let us know your thoughts in the comments. We're going to use the spot panel clear coat, this U-pole. We're going to the ratio 4 to 1 right here. We're going to go ahead and mix up four parts. We're using the standard hardener. It is a little bit cooler today. Now we're going to the four right here. We'll give it a little stir. Put the lid on, lock in the collar, lock in our gun, and we're ready to go. Okay, so we're ready for clear coat now. Basically, we're gonna set the air pressure to 28 PSI on this R500. I find that works pretty well. I've got the volume turned to three turns out from closed. So I turn it all the way in and then I turn it three turns out. The fan pattern is wide open. A couple things to mention when you're clearing with your R500, it is a little bit of a slower gun, so be patient, but it's important that you really focus on your overlap. You wanna overlap 80% with this gun. That's gonna help you get the slickest clear coat possible. I find it produces the best finish at around 30 PSI at about six inches away. This is what I found when using this gun. Now it may be a little bit different for you. So just experiment with it a little bit. See, I started out at 28 PSI on the air pressure and I just bumped it up to 30. I always forget that this gun sprays a little bit better at 30. I usually spray my Iwata at 28 PSI. Um, or my Segola at 28 PSI, but this spray is just a little bit better. It atomizes just a little bit better at 30. And you might notice how I'm spraying just a little bit slower than typical. Um, it doesn't really bother me that much because the trade-off in the reduced overspray makes all the difference if you're spraying with no booth. I let the first coat of clear flash off for 10 minutes and then I applied the second and final coat of clear and check out the finish. You be the judge. Let me know in the comments below how you think this gun performed. The benefits of this gun are the cost. At around $60, this gun is a bargain, I feel. The other thing is the transfer efficiency. Putting paint on the panel, less overspray in your garage always is a good thing. The next benefit is that you can use a small compressor to paint an entire vehicle without fluctuation in your air. Whether you're doing a complete paint job or a spot repair, 
You don't need a ton of air with this gun. The only slight drawback to this gun is it's a little bit of a slower gun. To me, the trade-off is well worth it. Listen, if you want to learn more about paint and body repair, check out one of these videos now. I appreciate each and every one of you watching, and we'll see you next time on Garage Noise.